Hello, this is Mitchell Sanders, and I'm going to be bringing you the third chapter of the first book for <clears throat> The Golden Eagle. Alright, we're going to start off and hit the ground running real quick here. Alright, chapter three. <clears throat> Incredible, Travis noted, staring at Leah's face. Your eyes are so weird. I can't believe there are two colors. Yeah, blue and brown in both. As cool as it looks, standing out in a parrot of pirates is not always a good thing, he says as a bark sounded around them. He was surprised to see the dog that had dragged him from the uh, pit leap up and place both um, paws on his chest and start licking his face. Looks like someone found a new friend, Travis said with a smile. He began to scratch behind the dog's ears. Thank you very much for saving my life, he said. The dog paused for a second, as if understanding him, but went back to panting his fa painting his face with drool. Okay, that's enough, he said, as the dog dropped down onto all fours. He knelt down to inspect the collar. Jill, uh... He tried drowning out the sounds and butchering the name. Screw it. Jill, work, well, Jill will work. So, how, so are you going to ask how we got here? He asked. I'm guessing you were left here because you were not loyal or something. Or was it in question? Lee asked. How did you know? Larissa replied. <laughs> uh, I, I think I probably should add a little something on it. How did you know? Larissa replied. The reason I am here because I jumped ship when I found out. Not too far away is the rest is the next pirate lord, he explained, reaching for the sash on his waist. He quickly noticed the map was still in place. Lee glanced around the room, suppressing his disappointment. The room was empty, save for a table, a few containers against the wall. The only thing visually interesting was the roots twisting and making up the walls. Travis, get moving. We got things to do and we can't stay here, Larissa called. And Lee turned around to see her strapping on a belt filled with pouches, and then grabbed and she grabbed a second and strapped it over her chest and one shoulder. And you noticed a dagger and a strap for a much larger weapon on the back. Lee thought it better of inquiring about it, as he noticed a bit of a light came from a small hole in the roots. Hmm. Take as you're worried the trail of the dog dragging here will attract unwanted attention. We don't think we know. If you are so much as injured... If you... S <clears throat> we don't think we know. If you so much as injured one, they will retaliate. They have a nasty habit of being too damned organized. And since the dog dragged you here, we know for a fact they are on their way. She said, marching forward. She cried out when a painted figure leaped down at her from the, from the entrance. Larissa! Travis crawled out. James reached for his short sword but found it missing. Lee grabbed the surprise attacker, pushing past Larissa. As Lee elbowed checked the man into the roots with James with James's sword slitting his throat. Blood spilled from down his neck, and following one massive stream, Larissa scrambled back, trembling in fear, as she watched the body drop limply. Relax, he's just dead, Lee said, rolling his eyes, as he handed the weapon back to James, both in, both in silence. <clears throat> God, I really do need to work on my actual skill of writing. Anyway, practice, practice, practice. Back to the story. Lee grabbed onto the grass outside of the hole and pulled himself out, aggravating his wound with the effort. James crawled out behind him, looking at his weapon still in his hand. Keep an eye out. There should be at least three more hanging around, and Larissa's scream is sure to put them on alert, he advised. Lee rolled his eyes before glancing back and noticing that they were not being followed. Hurry up. We need to get moving, he called down. Jill rushed up, sitting at his side and looking at him well. You as well, but where are the others? Why am I asking you? He turned away as he still caught Travis giving him a concerned look. Catch a bit of the sun, Trev Travis asked as Larissa crawled up from the hole. James was behind her. Sorry, had to move the body, he said, looking at his brother. Why in the world? Holy mouth. Travis only shook his head. Fine. Do you have a place to go, or are you just booking it? Not sure. Depends on your intentions, Travis admitted, taking point. My intentions? Lee replied. Yeah, do you plan on sticking around or going off on your own? If you stick with us, we'll lead. we will lead, but we have our safe spots and we plan to keep... <clears throat> but we have our safe spots and we plan to keep them, James replied. I have a very stupid plan, but I need a rough estimate as to where I am exactly, Lee said. You got a map? Nah, a good one, but it serves, he admitted. What do you have in mind? I'm risking the bog for the castle in the middle of the island, Lee, but it's causing the other three to stop. The mortal gargoyle, James stammered out. <clears throat> Let's try that again. The, 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 the mortal gargoyle, James stammered out, inclining his head as to get a better look at Lee. I don't plan on fighting him, 
Lee said, his mouth twisting with a smirk. I'm crazy, but I'm not that stupid. <laughs> Look, you're crazy if you think you can solo where armies have failed, Travis said, stepping forward to cow him away from his idea. This is a suicide mission. Yeah, well, it's my only hope of getting off this island alive and, and well, Lee replied. You would be better off waiting for another ship to come in. Not really. Anyone on the island is going to die, be it from old age or bold action. There is not rescue unless someone stumbles across this island, and even then it's not much of a chance, since we are close to the center of the archipelago. This is one of the most dangerous places to travel. Only pirates will come to this island, and then only potential pirate lords. And they will not take you off this island, Lee said. There's no boat at the center of the island. Look, that's true. We're the best people to stay with, since we don't much care for human flesh, James said as his sword began pointing at Lee's direction. Now just let me do my thing, and I'll be the last person you'll ever need to worry about. If your prediction comes true, Lee said. Look, can I at least see your map, he said, eyeing the paper. Trade it for some directions, Lee said, seizing the opportunity. It's in a valley. Head north from here, using the sun's movement as your guide. You can't miss it, James said, stepping forward, his hand ready for the map. Thank you, he said, handing the map off, saying as not seeing much more use out of it. James turned away as Lee glanced the other two, giving no response, and getting no response, headed off with the, with the dog at his heel. Sorry, I'm scrolling down. I'm reading this off of Microsoft Word because, you know, I didn't get everything printed off. It's also why I'm not actually staring into a camera or else you'd have me, like, maybe less than a foot away from the actual camera. And you don't want to see my ugly mug that close, trust me. Lee glanced back before he checked his directions and headed north. No sense in dallying around. He followed as he pushed past... He frowned as he pushed past uh, bushes and trees as Jill suddenly lowered her head to the grasses. With her hackles going up and trusting the dog's intuition more than his own, dropped down to one knee under the green foliage. Jill bared her teeth as Lee kept his eyes shifting under the stalks as he heard movement. He couldn't see anything as he realized he had no weapon on him. He kept still as the rustling grew faint, uh, faintly stronger before slowly moving away. Raising his head, he watched as a few more people moved away from the from him and crouched down, but still notable as they vanished the way he had just came. Oh, shit, he mouthed. The man vanished from eyesight. Look out! Someone shouted as uh, uh, Travis and Larissa shouted in pa panic. Lee kept his feet moving, but the dog nosed his side. Fine, he growled, hunching into the bushes as he made his way back. The group seemed to have ta uh, been tackled to the ground and still screaming filled the air. Lee thought, Lee's feet froze when he with movements up. Well, I tried, he said, shrugging. He turned, but the wound in his side gave him a spasm. Then again, the doctor in the hand is worth more than the pod. He admitted, but how? He crouched down again. He studied the dirty leather coats and paint faces of each castaway. He'd tell most of them were either tanned or Caucasian. Chantal would have a fit if she saw this, he muttered, he might, uh, mused. Out of the uh, six, there were three three with cutlasses, one with a spear and leather shield, another with a regular bow, while the last had a crossbow. He watched them shum ja shum j shove James forward, grabbing the map and his weapon. The group seemed much more organized. The crossbow was standing above them a good distance, keeping a lookout. The bow was doing the same, but it was a bit more focused on the three before him. The so swords were behind them, and the spear's spear was looking at the map. This would be so much more easier if I had a comic book drawer or something like that. Oh, well. <laughs> Lee uh, looked up, and there was lots of daylight, and the full scale of the island was still not in his scope. He wanted to keep trouble to a minimum, and he needed to act fast. Lee glanced down to see Jill lying flat on her belly. Let's see how smart you are. Stay, he ordered, pointing downward before he walked away. Lee kept moving, using his, the trees as cover. He hear quite murmuring below him. He ignored it, making his way back to behind the uh, crossbowman. There's another guy on us. There's a small group, but he... <clears throat> there was another gr guy, honest. We are just a small group, but he left. He's headed to the bog, James shouted as Lee poked his head around a tree. I very much doubt that, a cold voice said, pushing James forward. One of the castaways began to thumb the blade. Where is your fourth member? I will not ask again, he screamed. <clears throat> 
Where is your fourth member? I will not ask again, he screamed, but James didn't change his story. All three men took with the sword, stepped forward, and grabbed James, keeping him pinned down while the spearman took out a knife. Now whenever Lee murmured, rushing forward, he grabbed one man by the mouth and jaw and then twisted until there was a snap. He let the body drop to the ground in favor of the crossbow. He held it upright as a scream pierced the air. Wincing, he kept himself from re uh, reaching for his ears by force of will. He glanced over and saw James falling to the ground, clutching at his hand. Blood spilled... Well, he howled at the top of his lungs. The spearman decked him, forcing James to fall silent while cradling his ha hand close. I'll take another. Where is he? Where's the man with the dog? I don't know, he cried out. Lee counted his blessings and crept back into hiding. The uh, boss one swordsman sent us the spearman stopped questioning James and turned around. What? He shouted before noticing the dead body. Lee watched from the cover of his leaves as the bowman latched an arrow and began scanning. Lee lined up a shot and fired. A low thump was all that could be heard from the second body dropping to, uh, as a, before a second body dropped to the ground. Blood screamed out as his bolt lodged in his throat. The man was clawing at his neck in an attempt to stop the bleeding. Where are you? Come out and fight like a man or I'll cut your friends open, the spearman screamed as the spearman knelt down to examine the fallen bowman. Bolt came from there, he examined, pointing into the bushes. The swordsman quickly moved in on Lee's location while the third rema uh, remained to keep James pinned. Lee whistled and yelled. <laughs> Lee whistled, and Joe barked, appearing from the other side. Sick of me, shouted his voice echoing while the dog charged the swordman that had James pinned. He brought the weapon around, but Jill bit down on the man's wrist, tackling him to the ground as a loud bone-crunching crack came down between the dog's teeth. The spearman spun around a stab at the attacker as James grabbed the sword that... that they neglected with his blood smear, uh, smeared right... He grabbed the sword at the level of dexterity nobody thought the possible and paled the, the uh, spearman. This is why I'm not a professional, people. <clears throat> the spearman spun around to stab at the attacker as James grabbed the sword they had neglected. With his blood-smeared right, he grabbed... There should be a the there. Grabbed the sword and with a level of dexterity nobody thought possible and paled the spearman. <sighs> Just goes to show, you can edit this thing three or four times and you will still find mistakes. Not to mention my lips being the cause of quite a few of them on these vocal things, which is why I, you know, said screw it and just decided to bull rush through. Anyway, back to the story. Sorry for the mistake. Jill uh, barked down as Travis grabbed one of the man's legs and pulled him off his brother. Jill wagged her tail and continued to pull in the opposite direction. Are you kidding me? Now is not the time, Travis said as, her, as his brother crawled out from uh, under the uh, howling man. Lee didn't waste a second when the two stopped to attack James. He grabbed onto one by the wrist and shoving his uh, own sword into his body. The second was a bit slower to react. James scrambling to reclaim his own weapon as he managed to sl a slight lunge, clutching his Okay, yeah, this is going to put me out of the... Clutching his... Uh, uh, why in the world? Ah, uh, never mind. Manage a slight lunging lunge, clutching his blade as he jammed, jammed the weapon into the, his former attacker's gut. I'm really sorry about this. I'm actually making a few corrections to the wording and stuff while I'm actually doing this. The thing is, is though, I'm a terrible freaking editor, a terrible speller, and a terrible writer. So, sorry for the awkward silences. But if I try to cut them out, I can almost guarantee you that I'm going to cut something, and then all of a sudden you're going to have a pause for like a split second and all of a sudden carry on and it's going to get really freaking confusing so i figure since i have absolutely no idea how to actually edit i figure <laughs> just bear with the pauses i'm sorry anyway internal organs spilling out from the wound where the blade was pulled back lee tossed the crossbow to the ground clutching pulling the cutlass out of the last swordsman's chest and letting him fall off and letting him fall to the ground. A stench of blood and death filled the air. Jill, heal, he ordered, feeling a bit of relief when the dog obeyed. Licking her chops as she sat down. 
And James fell to his knees as Lee confirmed his own fears, showing the man's left hand was lapped off. As the Larissa quickly went to her belt to try to save the man's life, Lee grabbed one of the ragged coats and, cleaning it off his newly claimed sword, watched as James vanished back into the tree hole to do void Tamer knows what. Lee frow uh, frowned as a pot was uh, tossed out of the hole, and a few logs began to uh, been again, <clears throat> a few logs being tossed out as well. Here, use this flint to light a fire. I need to sterilize my needles. If he plans on keeping as much of his arm as possible, Lee nodded as he set to work, eyeing the man with a quick glance. He was surprised the man lasted as long as he did before submitting, submitting to blood loss. Alrighty, and that is going to be the end of chapter three. I have to admit, it's been a little while since I actually ran in on this one. But uh, overall, other than a couple of short pauses to actually make a few minor corrections to wording and stuff like that, I have to admit I think I did a pretty decent job. Anyway, appreciate you for listening, and I hope to see you back for the next chapter. Have a good day, everyone.